uh, third session and third keynote speaker. Uh, we've been talking about uh, green tech, we've been talking about sustainability, we talked about what does it take to become an entrepreneurship, and uh, since money is always uh, pretty important, now we go to the money part. Uh, Jacob Steve Jensen, uh, keynote speaker. Uh, the topic is investment in green tech startup. Please give him applause. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will try to make a sort of a combination of what uh, Tina and uh, Catherine just talked about. So uh, try to see how can we make a clean tech uh, something where we can uh, make a bit of money from and save the world in the same time. That's sort of the ambition at least. Uh, and I don't know how much you know about uh, seed capital or how much you know about investors uh, until you get your fuck off money. As Tina said, you'll need somebody like us, uh, perhaps. So I I'll t tell you very briefly about who we are, um, how venture capital as such work, and then uh, go a bit more into to, uh, why we think that uh, clean tech is a very interesting area to invest in. It will be sort of over a bit like what Catherine talked about, uh, then how we actually invest in clean tech, and then a single slide about what I think you should, or uh, what I think is needed to succeed as a startup. So that should be it. Um, very briefly, uh, we are a very early stage fund. That means when you're an investor, you can invest uh, when people just have an idea, you can invest on the stock exchange or you can invest somewhere in between and there's different levels of, of risk involved in that and we go in very early, so very high risk. Uh, we have uh, uh, a lot of money. Presently we have 250 million euros under management as we say and right now we have a fund of 70 million euros which we invest in new companies. Uh, and we have around 70 companies. This is not clean tech, we only have five or ten clean tech companies, uh, depending on definition of clean tech, but uh, we invest in all kinds of tech. Um, so that's just about us. So venture capital investors, what we do is we take high risk, and because we take high risk, we want high return, and if we want high return, we have to invest in very, very good ideas, because otherwise you can't make a lot of money. Um, for us, uh, we only invest in, in new companies. It's, uh, we are partly uh, funded by the Danish government, so we are not allowed to, to, uh, to support existing companies. So it has to be a new company. It has to be somebody with a substantial competitive advantage, which means that you have to be able to do something nobody else can do, and they cannot be able to copy you. Because otherwise, we will prove in the best case that we have a market, but uh, somebody else will run away with the market afterwards. And what we do is we, we, uh, we come with some money, we get some, some shares, uh, if everything goes well, everybody becomes rich. If it doesn't go well, uh, we lose our money and you don't owe us anything afterwards. And what we're trying to achieve is, in the end, do as, as Tina did, uh, start a company, sell it again, become rich, or at least make more money than you did when you invested, and then try another one again and again. Um, or uh, get to a stock exchange, an IPO. That's um, uh, another way to get out of the, because we want, our, we want, of course, to get our money back again, so we can invest them in new companies as well. Oops. So what we do is, if you have this good idea in, in the clean tech space or in any other ca uh, category, is you have to have something that which everybody really, or a lot of people really, really needs, but they are willing to pay for. So you have to have something which is need to have and not nice to have. Um, you have to have a, a huge market, um, and you have to have the people who, are, who has the capabilities uh, needed to, to get this product into the market or who are aware that they do not have the cap capabilities and are willing to get the capabilities inside the company. Uh, and you need to know, this is the business model, you need to know how are you actually going to make money. Uh, you can make money on taking a patent and selling, uh, getting royalties, you can sell a product, you can make consultancy, you can make a lot of different uh, models. You need to know how you will do that. And finally, if you want to talk to people like us, it would be really great if you can tell us who's going to buy your company afterwards so we all 
can make a lot of money on it. And this is just, just to, to say how much are we actually looking at. We are looking at uh, two new, new ideas every day. Uh, and we invest in one every month, one, to, one or two every month. And uh, out of those, uh, we will take uh, only one in every quarter into our next round. So it's, it's, uh, th that's uh, sort of the, the, the road you have to go down. And if we look at the statistics, it will be a success in perhaps one uh, every year, one investment every year. So we look at 500 or 1,000 opportunities and one of them will actually become a success to the extent that we want. Some of them do become successes, but not that big. And why don't they do that? That's because this is really difficult. This is just, this is, uh, when we talk to entrepreneurs, they always tell us we have our ideas a bit better than all the others. It's more safe, we are closer to the market, we will make more money. But the thing is, there are so many things that you can't uh, uh, foresee when you start a new company. And this is just some of the, the, the main things. And, and uh, even in the best case, we will know with 80% certainty that the team is right, the market will buy it. But we never know, will somebody else come in with a better product? Will uh, the inventor find something else to do? A lot of things can happen. And if you combine all of these uh, probabilities, you get down to a very low probability. Uh, and this is why it's difficult to make money in this market, and this is why everybody needs, uh, needs it to be a big market, so when you succeed, you actually have a big, really, really big success. So, in the clean tech space, we, we sort of say there are three mega trends driving this, uh, this, uh, this market, and that's the, the growing world population, it's a higher li living standards of the people moving from, uh, from land to, to, to cities. And what that does is you will have uh, these huge uh, uh, water resource users uh, and, and uh, energy users and uh, we, consume, we consume so much. And it's just going, as Catherine showed, it's just going through the roof. So we use a lot of resources. Uh, oops. And that gives us a lot of problems because uh, when the, there's fewer resources, the prices will go up. Uh, the resources we can't get anymore, and we will also uh, destroy a lot of things. Um, so, and in, in the investment community, a problem is always an opportunity to make money. So, <laughs> so you need to be able to, to sort of avoid some of these things. So you have the, the increasing, increasing resources prices, you have uh, in, the, in the lack of availability, this is just an example from the, I think it's called the, yeah, the uh, Ogallala water Aquifier. So this is where the U.S. Get all, gets uh, all of its water for for its uh, for growing its crops. And as I've read, uh, they are taking one and a half meters out of this water level every year, uh, and only re regaining 15 centimeters or something like that. So, so a lot of water is di disappearing there, and it will run out within the next I don't know 50 years or so. Um, we have uh, the CO2 emissions, we have all the waste and all the pollution, uh, you have people not being able to live in the cities anymore, uh, you can't breathe when you're in Beijing, you can't breathe when you're in Mexico City, uh, and the amount of waste that we all create is enormous and it's just increasing and increasing and increasing. Uh, the grotesque ex examples of how we, what we are doing in order to get, uh, get uh, oil, uh, spending, uh, five barrels of water and 100 cubic meters of natural gas to get one barrel of oil in, in, uh, in, uh, when you get it from tar sand in, 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 in Canada. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, even worse things happening in China, where they try to do the same uh, things. So these are all these problems. And if you have any solutions that can solve or uh, just mitigate some of these problems, it's really interesting. It's really interesting for the world. And it's interesting for us as investors if you can do it in, in the right way. Um, um, and we're not the only one who have seen this. This is uh, uh, what's happening in cleantech or in, in venture capital. The, the uh, amount of investments going into, venture, uh, into the cleantech space is just increasing and increasing. Um, and there's a lot of different of areas you can go into. You have, uh, you have uh, this is mostly to show you that, that uh, sometimes things get into fashion also in venture capital, so sometimes solar is really hot, uh, bioethanol can be really hot, 
And then some investors lose a lot of money in bioethanol and then suddenly it's not hot anymore and the money runs somewhere else. Um, so there's a lot of different things, but this is also to show you that clean tech is just, it's a lot of things. It's a lot of different industries, it's a lot of different technologies. So what we do is, we are trying to say, we only have like, like uh, when we invest in a new company, we invest 2 million Danish kronos, 250,000 euros, something like that. And we can invest up to 7 or 8 million euros. So we can't build a bioethanol plant or a uh, wave dragon uh, energy machine, or we can't um, uh, make new 10 megawatt uh, wind turbines. But what we could do is we can go in and we can optimize on some of it. And this is actually an example from a company you will hear about just afterwards, but it's our latest investments and we are um, very hopeful about it. This is just to, to give you an idea of what can you actually do. Uh, what it is, is uh, it's an anim anemometer, so it's, what you do is you measure wind. Speed of wind and direction of wind. And it, what you see on the, on the top uh, right is how it's measured today, because this uh, wind measure is sitting on the top of the wind turbine, so it sits behind the blades, it gets turbulent, so it can't really predict uh, or tell you where the wind is precisely coming from. So the turbine will always be a little bit off guard, which will make, uh, which will uh, increase um, uh, 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 maintenance cost and it will decrease the, the amount of energy you actually produce. And furthermore, you can only get the wind that which has actually hit the turbine. So what, what could be really interesting is if you could get the other one, which is in the, in the lower, in the bottom, which you can get with uh, this aggregate here, which is $125,000 US uh, uh, anemometer, which measures the wind 100 meters or so in front of the wind turbine and says, okay, in 10 seconds, the wind will have this speed and this direction. And now we invested in this um, uh, wind uh, photonics, it's called. They can do exactly the same at one tenth of the price. This will increase uh, the uh, power uh, produced by the wind turbines with 10% and will decrease operation and maintenance costs with 10%. This is really, really a lot. Uh, we hope if it all works. <laughs> it seems so. Uh, there are so many things in energy efficiency. Uh, this, this is just a lot of areas. If you look at the, at the left side, it's actually areas where it will, you will gain money from saving CO2 emissions. On the right side, it's more difficult. And uh, any place where you can get people to actually then do this, because one of the simplest ways of, of saving CO2 is to, to uh, insulate your buildings and people don't really do it anyway. So you need something that makes people do, do it. And we are looking in, in all of these areas. Um, we have companies uh, in, in pollution control, that's, uh, that's Aminex. We have uh, companies in, in, um, in solar, in wind and so forth. We have it in materials. This is uh, the world champion in clean tech, the one last year in, in Silicon Valley. Uh, based out of uh, DTU uh, and the uh, Copenhagen Business School. They make concrete where they save 50% of the CO2 which is emitted from uh, construction today. If you put that on, on a global scale, you will save twice the amount of CO2 that the uh, airline industry emits globally. And at the same time, they will save 30% of costs. Um, so this is really... Uh, you, know, you can make a really, really big difference by changing the materials a little bit. And this is actually not even changing the materials, it's just putting existing materials together in a new way. We would very much like to see something within retreating. So if you can get these precious uh, metals or rare earth ma materials and all these kind of things, if you can know, find a way to get it back, so we're not running out of tantalum or, tantalum or whatever, all kinds of... of, of uh, of uh, materials which are put into our flat screens. If you can f find a way to get that back profitably, it would be really interesting. Uh, and pollution control as well. This is uh, for, uh, for diesel engines. Also a DTU based uh, company. So that's basically it. Uh, just just uh, one last slide. If you want to have success in this, Actually, it should say execute, which is in the bottom. It should say that on the top, and on the next line, and on the next line, or the next line. So just do like, like Tina says, do it. But, you, but 
but I think that if you're in, in the clean tech space, you need more than just do it. You really actually need to be a very, very good engineer or whatever. You need to have something which, which differentiates you a lot. You have to have a product, a, a real product. Um, uh, and then what should you do? You should always go out and talk to your customers. This is just to, if you want to have success, you have your good idea and before you, you, you start wasting or using a lot of your next uh, uh, years of your life trying to get this idea into, into real life, just go out and talk to your customers. The guys that you think you're going to buy this in two or three years and ask them, if I come out to you with a product like this, would that be interesting? And then they will tell you, it could be, but it has to be able to do like this as well. It has to be certified like that. You have to be able to deliver in these qualities and these quantities and otherwise we won't buy it. It's always good to know upfront what's actually going to, to, to hit you when you want to have your product. Have to have a good team, and as things evolve, if you go uh, with, with people like us who want to, to take your company global, you have to, uh, to uh, want to keep building the team, because the, the people who can sell the first three products are not always the guys who can sell the next three million products or so. Uh, and then get sufficient funding. Uh, because otherwise you're going to spend all of your time running around trying to get funding and not selling or building your product. That's it. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Jacob. Okay, so now um, if there are any questions, we can take them. We have some free. Yeah, there is one over there. Uh, yeah, I have one question. Um, mm -hmm. Recently, we have a meeting with uh, Venture Cup, and they were told us that uh, in case if your idea or a startup will win at the Venture Cup, there will be a possibility to get funding, for example, from Seed Capital, which is also a partner of Venture Cup. But you didn't mention it uh, in the lines uh, how do you find companies where you invest in? Do you have any recent examples or of, of where we actually find the companies? Yes, no, exactly from Venture Cup. Did you ever invest in a company which has won or yeah in Venture Cup competition? Uh, I've invested in. I've been the prime, the, the sort of the, the guy leading the investment in two companies that actually afterwards won the, the Venture Cup. <laughs> but but uh, I mean, we we are, we are everywhere trying to find uh, new companies to invest in, and uh, Venture Cup is a very very good place to go because you learn how to pitch, which is really important. So you tell us, tell me and other investors what we are interested in hearing, and not going too much in details with things that we don't want to hear at that point. So, uh, Venture Cup is really, really good at helping you to how to do that. Uh, likewise, if you go to Connect Denmark and other uh, similar places, and we work together with all of these, it's, it's, it's difficult to pitch your idea. So. Okay, we have time for a second question, if there is any. Yes, we have one there. Yes. Uh, yeah. Wait, 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 just a second for the microphone. He's coming. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, it's. Uh, uh, I think in the past two years there has been some questioning about the green uh, bubble mm -hmm. and the green technology, and actually there has been like declining in the investment mm -hmm. and in, mm -hmm. and also the stocks of the green companies. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think this technology is going? I I, I think that. <laughs> First of all, unfortunately, this is not going to be a bubble because there's a really, really huge need and it's just growing and growing. But of course, if it's not going to be a bubble, then everybody will be running there and then sometimes you will have a bubble because everybody says, oh, this is the, the, the new thing. And uh, so if, when everybody starts to run at solar at the same time, prices will go up and they go in too early and uh, they lose all of their money and they say we'll never go there again. And so you have, I mean, it's, 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 it's a learning process. Uh, um, yeah. So you think it will contain like steady growth? I, I can't see that it shouldn't. I can't see why it shouldn't uh, maintain this growth. And also if, if it just say, okay, we have a company like, like Winda which can improve the energy efficiency with 10% on a solar cell. We have a company like Abeo that can reduce CO2 and costs significantly on any new constructions. 
Uh, and if we just, and they are out of, of the DTU space, so to speak. If, if companies like that comes out of here, there has to be, I mean, this is not the center of the world, so there has to be lots of lots of technologies out there, and there are so many problems that you can solve. So, uh, and, and uh, yeah, so I'll just... Can we, can we ensure that there's no green bubble out there? Of course, there's always a bubble, one, but I mean, it's, 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 it's not going to go away. The green okay. is not going to go away. Uh, somebody's going to lose money because they're going the wrong places in green, but, but it's not going to go away. Okay. Thank Good. you so much, Jacob, and give him another big close. Thank you so much. Okay. So now we can get ready for the third uh, pitch session. So please come on stage, Danish Power System, Share Leaf, and Windar Photonics. Can take just two seconds to start everything up again. So, which is third, so, Danish power system. Okay, we are ready to go. Okay, so first pitch, Danish power system. Um, you have three minutes, the stage is yours. Yes, three minutes. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. How's the sound? It's okay? Very good. Okay. <clears throat> If I sound a little bit rusty, it's because we had a little reason to celebrate and we had the Christmas party last night. So if I sound rusty, I am rusty. <clears throat> right. Well, what we want to do is we want to produce a very, very efficient energy uh, with the fuel cells. <clears throat> and we do that with, the, among others, uh, renewable fuels. There's a lot of issues in this world. We've been talking about them uh, today already. There are some local short-term issues. There are some national medium-term issues and there are some long-term uh, global issues. There are some reasons behind this. Uh, you probably know most of them. We have, for a large part, old technology. We have issues with the supply of fossil fuels and we have growth in the population. And there are some uh, significant effects uh, following uh, these issues. Uh, we have air pollution, which is very expensive and is very damaging for health and society. Uh, there are uh, strategic issues with energy supply. Countries, they need to be able to have energy for uh, their economies to grow, and everyone wants growth in their economy. And also, we have issues with the CO2, which is causing what we heard earlier, more extreme weather and all other unforeseeable uh, consequences. So, there are a number of different solutions. Uh, there's also some that I haven't mentioned here, uh, and we said earlier, uh, the solutions need to be multiple. It's not one technology that's going to solve all the problems. There's going to be multiple solutions. One of those solutions uh, could be fuel cells, or we expect to be fuel cells. Other people expect it to be fuel cells that take part of this. <clears throat> what we do is something very, very complicated. We produce something called an MEA, which is basically an active membrane and two electrodes. And from that, you can have uh, hydrogen and oxygen react and you get electricity. It is very, very efficient, and we can do it from pure hydrogen, and we can do it from, ex uh, for example, methanol or uh, liquefied gas on bottles. Uh, depending on what application the fuel cells should be used, uh, there are different reasons to use different uh, types of fuels. We have the first potential markets will be uh, the high-end camping market, when people buy their uh, vans and their... Uh, uh, the boats, uh, they will very much like to have an extended operation uh, radius for their, uh, for their uh, leisure time. Uh, batteries can solve some of it, diesel generators can solve some of it, but they both have some negative offsets uh, which we can solve with the fuel cell technology. <coughs> uh, people that have bought a very expensive boat, they very much uh, like to get rid of the noise and the vibration from the diesel generators uh, which they have on board. This is not for propelling, this is for onboard power, for example, for heat or for, uh, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, air conditioning. <coughs> what we can uh, offer uh, is to do exam projects with students. Uh, we can do uh, work together for diploma projects or uh, internships 
we have had several of these already, and uh, we are very happy to continue to that, do that uh, ongoing. So if any of you think this might be interested, and you feel you have the uh, the, the right abilities and uh, the right uh, background, we are always uh, happy to hear from you. I think, I think it's it. Yes, but this is my last slide, so... Okay. Yes. That's it? Right. Okay, great. Thank you. Just take, just take the microphone. I can start up the presentation sure. for you. You have it on the, you have it on the internet side. Okay, second startup, share leave. Uh, you have three minutes, the stage is yours. Hi everybody, I'm Michael Moncur, I'm from uh, Watercooler. And I'm here to tell you a bit about our two carpooling solutions, share leave, which is a corporate carpooling solution, and duck seat, which is a carpooling solution for events. Um, we are three guys in Watercooler. We're Martin, Elias, and I, and we have each our area of expertise. Um, they get to get the picture in the newspapers, I get to work on Saturdays. Um, and uh, what we've, uh, we were created a year ago, and um, by accident we went into the carpooling industry, uh, and if we'd known how many others have tried this area, we'd probably be a bit more comprehensive by choosing this. Um, the reason why we went into it was that um, we, before we created Sharelift, we found out that um, a lot of companies actually had a lot, have a lot of costs when employees are taking their car to a meeting or seminar or the cab to the airport. So, for instance, Nordea, they use 80 million kronas a year just in uh, mileage allowance and cab fares for the employees in the workhouse. Um, so, um, we created this module which Novozymes are going to use... Uh, from now on, uh, from next week, which is a very easy way to show your colleagues uh, when you're going to the airport, when you're going to the other facilities and so on. Um, and the uh, advantage is, of course, reduced CO2, reduced costs, and it's another, a new way of uh, socializing with your colleagues. And because we, um, we had this back end, we thought, why not use it for something else? Because all the other carpooling solutions, they do things quite similar. So we thought, why not do it as simple as possible? I don't know if you know Doodle, the way um, where you create a, um, a calendar event. We thought, why not use the um, logic of that? So whenever um, a person has an event, um, that could be a, a football match, a concert, a wedding, a private wedding, it could be anything, uh, festivals, uh, they go into docseat.com and they create their own event just by typing the name and the address and the time. And then they get their own unique URL, just as a, in Doodle. They can distribute to the participants. In that way, you can find out that Uncle Hans, Uncle John, he's going to the wedding and he can actually pick you up on the way. So um, those were the two things. Um, Shareleaf is the one that's going best right now, so that's the one we're focusing on. Um, yeah, and that's it. Thank you so much. Okay, we can move on to Windows Photonics. One second. Just clicking. Okay. Um, we are sorry for the yellowish thing. Uh, we don't know what's wrong, but I, I hope we can keep going with this uh, yellowish thing. Okay, let's start with the last pitch. So, Winder Photonic, uh, three minutes, the stage is yours. Thank you a lot. Uh, my name is uh, Christian Peterson, and uh, I'm working uh, at the DTU Photonic. Uh, and today I'm going to give the talk on behalf of the uh, managing director, uh, Jörn Korsgaard, who's actually the uh, the founder of uh, Winda Photonics. He was un, uh, unable to be here today. Uh, what, we, what we are going to, to do in, in, in the coming uh, months is actually to produce uh, a new prototype of a wind sensor, low-cost wind sensor, which should be uh, situated uh, on top of the nacelle of uh, uh, existing wind turbines, future wind turbines, and actually give information both about the wind speed, but also the wind direction in a much more accurate uh, way than uh, can actually be done uh, with existing uh, standard sensors. 
So this is really what we want to do. And the way we want to do it is by measuring uh, uh, in a zone which is not corrupted by the turbulence of the wind turbine blades. So we measure actually the wind speed, in this case about 80 meters in front of the wind turbine, midair. And uh, in, uh, at this distance you have no more turbulence. Uh, therefore we can get the, 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 the better performance of our instruments. But let me just go briefly uh, through the, the history. Uh, Winter Photonics was actually formed in 2008, but before that there was actually uh, three years of research between its mother company, uh, uh, Opti Technology, which is uh, privately owned, and DTU Photonic. So it took a lot of uh, effort uh, to, to, to come to the stage where we could actually form the company. Uh, for the last year or so, we have done extensive field tests and we ex uh, expect, as I told you, to have the first prototype out uh, next spring. So this is going to be uh, uh, very exciting. The company is owned privately and by uh, Seed Capital uh, as well as uh, DTU. Okay, let me go on. Uh, what we can do is basically at a distance of 80 meter, measure wind speed and direction and the instrument you are actually looking at to the left. Um, the fundamental technology that we use is, is a diet laser, very cheap diet lasers, uh, which uh, are really an order of magnitude or more uh, uh, cheap than conventional fiber lasers used. So we are really having a competitive uh, edge due to the very low cost approach we have. This allows us to have a vision that we can really install these uh, sensors on every each wind turbine uh, to, to uh, individually optimize uh, the wind energy harvesting, particularly through what is called yaw control, the direction of the, the wind turbine, uh, but also to pitch of the wind turbine blades and also through a reduced wear. So this is very exciting. Just to give you a little bit of evidence that this is um, really so. Sorry, you can sum it up in 15 yeah. seconds. Yes, I'll just uh, show you this one then. Here you, uh, you see one of the first examples where wind turbine ha has been optimized using lighters, more precise lighter uh, wind sensors uh, when compared to uh, standard sensors. So we really hope that uh, this is something that we're going to, to take off uh, in, in the coming years. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. So, just one second. Okay, um, we are approaching the end of the um, keynote speaking and of the startups. Um, we would like you guys to give an overview of uh, what actually Venture Cup can do for you, for your ideas. How can they help you to bring them and push them into the real market? And that's here, Soren, uh, Mikkel Sorensen, my apologies, um, to tell you that. The stage is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I must see I'm very excited to be here today. I think we've witnessed, vit, witnessed some very inspiring keynote speakers and some very cool startups, some great pitching. And um, as Daria said, my name is Miguel, not Swan Miguelson, but Miguel Sorensen. And uh, I'm here to tell you a bit about Venture Cup, uh, what we do and what we can do for you. So basically, Venture Cup is a non-profit organization helping young entrepreneurs making their ideas happen. In uh, Venture Cup, we believe there's a huge talent pool among the universities in Denmark. And in the modern society, where knowledge seems to be the main competitive capacity, it seems quite logical to us to be looking at universities in the search for the ideas and the startups of tomorrow. Of course, we're quite aware that not all the ideas that come our way, all your ideas, will make the transition into a startup. But what we do believe is, is that some of these ideas will become startups, that will become companies of the future, and that's what will create jobs and growth, 
And that's basically what we're here for. Um, we've witnessed how creativity is very much alive, how ideas are occurring at universities. But we have also experienced how a helping hand can do a huge difference in making these ideas happen. So that's what we're trying to help with. And we do that in different ways. For instance, we got access to a great advisor board. Um, we have 40-something uh, advisors related to Venture Cup, some great people from different businesses, and they can advise teams uh, on different aspects, mentoring um, their business. We uh, do workshops, we do uh, pitch training workshops, as Jacob told us. Uh, we also do business plan writing camps and so forth. Um, we also provide a quite a strong network. Uh, we have a network um, some, to some big organizations, some uh, big companies, Novo and Avapot and so on, Seed Capital. Um, we also have a network of investors. Um, and, we, um, and, and very important, actually, uh, we are located at the Copenhagen School of Entrepreneurship. And there is, I think, 60-something young people who is doing startups sitting just outside our door. Uh, so there's a great entrepreneurial community just outside our office, actually. Um, very central to what we do are our two annual competitions. We have a startup competition in the, in the spring, which is about submitting a business plan, basically. You can win 250,000 kroners if you're really good. And we have an idea competition, which is coming up very soon. Uh, which is basically just about describing a great business idea. Well, how are we able to do all this for free? Due to our sponsors and our friends. All the universities pay a membership, and we have uh, some sponsors which, um, besides from funding, uh, also provide us with some very essential knowledge, being part of our jury, being part of our advice board, and so on. So... I'm going to tell you a bit about the idea competition because I think a lot of you guys uh, could be interested in this. I hope so, anyway. As I said, it's uh, basically uh, just about describing a business idea. Uh, and you can actually choose how you want to describe it. You can just do it in two to three pages. Of course, we need to know a bit about what is your idea, what is the customer pain that Jacko was t uh, talking about, uh, and what is the pain reliever, the painkiller? So the problem that people are facing and how you want to solve it. The essential of the idea. Then we need to know a bit about who are you? Are you a team? Is it just one person uh, with a good, good idea? Or is it a whole team? What are your competences uh, within that team? And do you lack any competences to make this idea happen? So that's quite all right, but we need to know that you're aware of this part. And of course, the market. Who would pay for your idea? That could include a customer profile, um, like not a market analysis, because it's quite a short executive summary that you're doing, but uh, still thoughts on the market. How is, it, how is the market looking? Is it growing? Who are your main competitors? And thoughts on these matters. All that submit an idea will, will get evaluation and feedback from our very competent jury. We have right now 110 jury members from different businesses, um, also including serial entrepreneurs and uh, investors. And of course, there's some money. Uh, if you win one of our five categories, you'll get uh, 25,000 kroners, which is also nice. We have five categories, and luckily if not enough, we have a clean tech and environment category, which seems quite suitable for the day. Uh, we also have life science and medtech, mobile and web, people and society, which also include uh, things like um, social uh, entrepreneurship and the product and technology. I'm just going to uh, show you a few examples. Um, these two girls, with a very catchy name, Bucky Ozone, uh, came up with an idea for a compound which enclosed ozone molecules, which can protect from 99.9% uh, .9 of UV radiation. Of course, uh, pro protecting against uh, skin cancer, but also uh, in painting, uh, prote protecting products. Um, they actually 
were in the idea competition and uh, just submitted these two to three pages, and now they got 2.6 million kroners in funding in pursuing this idea. These two guys are from CBS. Uh, they came up with a quite basic idea, actually, I think, for uh, a search engine, searching for icons, so designers and web developers could um, compare prices and quality of icons on the web. One of your own guys, Black Silicon Solar, they're now called. Osmos here uh, just uh, was in, um, in Silicon Valley this Thursday, I think, uh, participating in the World Championship of Clean Tech. Um, he won the, the startup competition last year. Uh, he had an idea for uh, nanostructured coating for solar cells, which improves the absorption of sunlight, thereby the energy efficiency. Um, and uh, yeah, they're doing quite well right now. So just to sum it up briefly, why should you guys participate? We have the network, which is uh, quite essential when starting up. So we can provide a, a network to both professionals and other young startups. You get feedback, we have our advisors, the mentors, uh, but also from the jury. Uh, every person participating get feedback from at least three jury members. Um, and of course you can use us, come up to our office, present your ideas, get feedback. And again, the money, of course, very important. So it's just about write a summary, two to three pages about a business idea and upload it latest November 28th on venturecup.dk. More details to be found there, of course. Um, and I know that a lot of you guys are here also for networking, so I would like to um, invite you for our next event at the, the Copenhagen School of Entrepreneurship. Uh, we have these networking Friday bars where people go looking for people with uh, specific skills, competences, that might be a web developer, business analyst, or whatever. So a lot of people being interested in, in entrepreneurship show up here, and uh, of course there are some beers and uh, snacks, so you can just come and hang out and uh, meet other people who might be looking for your future partner. And um, this is my information. And you are all very welcome to contact me. Of course, you can give me a call, but um, instead of doing all the questions right here, I think we should go because I read uh, this, uh, the schedule of the day, and I know that there's fruit beer coming up now, so I won't be holding you here anymore. But I'll go down there, have a beer, and you can all come and uh, ask all your questions down there. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Mikkel. Thank you. Just, just go to Okay, so we are pretty much done with all the talking today. Um, what we are moving to now, it's called the creative networking. So we thought about three main different uh, ideas for you guys uh, to, uh, to mingle, uh, to get attention on your ideas and try to uh, team up with different guys around you. So the three key uh, the three key creative suggestions are the followings. First of all, we have the challenges on the walls. So each startup has a challenge, That's, which is the one that they are facing at the moment. You can go there, you can talk to them, you can get feedbacks, and they can, of course, give feedbacks to you and maybe an internship. Second thing, we have two uh, walls, two white walls right there. Yeah, there's, there's Pire showing them to them, yes. Um, so one of them is for skill matching. So you can post, guys, what are the skills that you are, uh, that you are needed. And uh, if you want to offer your own skills, you can also do that. Please write your name, write your email, write your phone number, everything you can add about yourself. And in the other one, we have team building. So if you guys don't have... Uh, a team, but you have a cool idea, that's the wall where, we, where you can go to. Okay? So that's what's going to happen in 10 minutes. What we are going to do now is going to select the winners of the Better Place test drive. So this is going to be quite of a dynamic thing. So I'm going to ask you guys to pick a number, and this number is, of course, connected to a name, and that name 
is going to uh, win the test drive. So I start just going around one. Number? Open it and just say the number. Okay, I can say the number. Twelve. Twelve. Yeah. Twelve. Name twelve. Who is the lucky one? Sophie Bier Bierregard. We have Sophia. We have Sophia. Sophia. Not Sophia. Okay, next one. Number thirty-six. Thirty-six. Six. Anastasia Yarkovich. Okay. Anastasia? Okay, she's there. Uh, do you have the driving license? No. Uh, no. I do, but I, I, I... So you don't have it with you? No. Okay. Uh, so she can take it, right? I yeah. My best. <laughs> uh, that's fine, but we cannot do it. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We can. Okay, on, third on. one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Pavan Elisa. Once again. Pavan Elisa. Okay. Yes. Do you have the driving license? Okay. Great. Cool. Okay. One. <laughs> okay. You can stand up. Yes. Okay. Let's keep going. One. Could you, could you please come here? Let's, let me see. Nine. Number nine. Eimantas, number nine. Number nine. Karma Tshering. Where is uh, you are? I don't have the license here. You don't have the driving license. <laughs> too bad, too bad. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Next one again. Here, one. 21. 21. Giorgio de Murtas. Giorgio. Giorgio okay. De Murtas. Do, do, do we have Giorgio de Murtas? No, we don't. Okay, we keep going. One again. Me. <laughs> 47. Kai Heusen. Kai? Where is Kai? We have Kai. Uh, does he have the driving license? Because I know the guy. Guy, where is Guy? Guy. Okay. okay, wait a minute because I know the guy. Is he here? Not at this moment. Okay, we keep going, guys. Okay, one again. 37. Stefan Catalin. Do we have, okay, do you have the driving license? Say yes. No. <laughs> okay. I think I'm, I'm going to take the test drive. <laughs> okay, once again. <laughs> 27. Alessandro Pensini. Alessandro, okay, do you have the driving license? Okay, great. We have the second one. Alessandro, please come. Okay. So you can, you can go there right now so that you can get ready. Okay. Third one. And last. 19. 19. Camila Inessa Nielsen. Camila, Camila, is she? Okay. Do you have the driving license? Very good. Okay. We have the third one. Woo! You can also do this. Okay, guys. So, one second. So, we are pretty much done, uh, as I said, with the talking. So, now there's going to be creative networking. That's what I've just said. So, you can, guys, can go there. Um, another important thing, guys, sorry, one second. We have to move the chairs. So please take your bags and your clothes with you because we have to put up the tables for the dinner that is going to come later on. And don't forget that we have beers right there. Thank you so much and see you later. <laughs>